about you. It's about justice for Rashid. So God, we ask you to fill us with your spirit so that we can go out and do the work that you have for us to do to, uh, to demand justice. In the name of Jesus, God, we just ask you to bless today. Thank you. And all these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, all praises to the Lord, all praises to our Father, the Most High, and the Saint Jesus Christ for giving us the opportunity to stand up like men and to stand up like his people. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. We are Israel united in Christ. Uh, we are a biblical organization that teach the Bible in righteousness. We teach to keep the laws of God. We also teach to keep the laws of the land. We are a nonviolent group. We are a love group. We are a group that about that is about teaching our people to keep the commandments that's in that Bible. We obey the powers that be. We teach those things. We teach the righteous laws that keep our men in order to keep our women in order. That's what our mission is about. Uh, as we gather here today, we are here as we have uh, all been, uh, I guess I would say, violently introduced into a tragedy that happened to our sister, her son. And this is not the first time that things like this have happened to us and as our people. We are the nation of Israel. I can talk about that. I'll, I'll give you our website so that you can research us even more. We are, as I said, Israel United in Christ. As you heard and saw the order of the brothers as we were on the side, we are Israel United in Christ. Our website is www.israelunite.org. You can look us up and, and search out the truth. Don't, don't follow the lies that people are trying to uh, spew and say about us. We are not a hate group. We do not advocate any kind of thing like that at all. We are the first ones that will turn you in if you bring criminal activity among us. So let's get that straight. Let's get that on the record. Um, the, the point that I particularly want to make, and I want to, uh, again, mention the courage and the, and the tenacious spirit to stand up in in all types of opposition to have the bones of her son displayed. It takes me back, and I know many of you have thought about that, Mamie Till, when Emmett Till got killed, murdered, and Mamie Till had to, had to, uh, had to fight against all kinds of opposition that tried to keep her from bringing out the damage and the evil that was done to her son. It took a lot of courage to go against all of that. You can only, you can only imagine the phone calls, the different people, perhaps leaders that say, you should not do this. You should not embarrass what has happened to you. You should not embarrass, you should not show the uh, wickedness that this country has done upon the likes of our people. But she had to stand against all of that. And I'm not just trying to make a sweeping indictment about anything. I'm just being truthful about the reality that we face. It is not, an, it is not a, uh, a coincidence, or, or, or I should say, it's not a fluke accident that we are here again dealing with the same types of situation as we dealt in 1955. Many of us perhaps weren't born then, but the history bears it out. Uh, in New York, you had uh, Yusuf Hawkins. I don't, I'm just that went to purchase a car, and he got mistaken for going to see a white woman, and and a, a mob of, of of people in that in Bensonhurst went and destroyed him for nothing. And you can think about the pain that that mother went through. So the, we feel the pain of our people. When our sons and daughters get slaughtered, when our, like we have a, millions of our sisters are missing to this day. We at Israel United in Christ, we still have a campaign looking for our sisters that are being abducted, that's just gone missing. Well, it's not even really being talked about in the news too much, but we're still on the case. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because these are our people. When our sisters go missing, we feel like our daughters are missing. That's the collect. That's the collective. That's the collective injury that we all share. So when when my sister Tiffany, when she lost her son, we lost a son. When she feels pain, my mother feels pain. My sister feels pain. So we're here to support her. We're here to let her know that the order that you see with us, with, with us, this is how we can all be in order. This is the order that we can all be in. So that's the reason why we did, in case anybody's understanding, why do we do the formation and the marching and all of that? Because that is for you to know that all of these men that you see came out of all kinds of walks of life. But the Bible has a solution to our people's problems. 
And when we organize up underneath the auspices of that Bible, that's when things come together. And the people need to see that. The people need to see that there is hope for them. The people, my sister need to see that there's hope for her. All of the people in this community that's, that's living under tyranny, living under fear, they need to see that. They need to understand that there is a power that is beyond the powers that be. And we need to follow him. So that's what our coming together and standing in unity is a sign for you. It's a sign for all of you to know that you can do it too. We're not from outer space. We're your brothers. We're your people. We go to the same schools. We go, we work the same jobs. We do exactly the same things that you do. We even had a joke and said we eat and go to the bathroom just like you do too. We're not from outer space. Y'all all right? So here's the point. It is about unity. I saw a small part of the itinerary that said that we have the power. We do have the power. But the problem is we don't have the unity. We don't have the unity. We're not unified. If we were unified, the moment one incident of, of, of terrorism, because that's basically what that was. Can you imagine? I'm sorry, my sister, to bring this up. Well, my, cause you, my brother's being chased. The tyranny and the fear that's going through his mind as he's trying to escape death calling and trying to get help and trying to get trying to find some kind of refuge and they're passing his picture around on while he's already missing that kind of tyranny and we all know about that we all share that fear we can all think about that tyranny and that and that and that and that violence the moment that happened to any of us all of us need to think about how that one brother feels how that one sister feels and not just come together and have a rally, so to speak, and then go back as business as usual. Now, when I say business as usual, again, like I pointed out, we're not about breaking laws. We're not about rioting. That's not us. So don't put us in that bag at all. We are about order. We are about discipline. The one of the ways that you can discipline, discipline yourself, when I say discipline yourself, as you discipline yourself, believe me, the world will listen. Black folks alone give nearly over a trillion dollars to the United, to the uh, American economy every year in outside spending. Listen to what I'm saying. A trillion dollars. That's because we're unorganized. We have, we don't really have any foresight on knowing what to do among ourselves and we become immediate consumers because we, we feel like we have no, we feel like we have no future. So therefore we're locked into the present. We don't know our past. We don't really have any thinking, we're thinking that we don't have any control of our, future, our, of our future, so that makes you perfect consumers. Any dollar you get, you go and spend. So here comes Christmas. Christmas is not God's holiday. Here comes Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not God's holiday. The 4th of July, it's not your holiday. You're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Now, let me get a Bible now. I got to do this to you. Bring it out. I got to do this to you. Give me, because uh, like I said, we have the power, but we don't have the unity. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Let's start with that first. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Listen. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. The educational society have taught the whole world that we are not desired. For us to go missing... For somebody to kill one of our sons and actually have fun with it, basically, and to feel like there's no kind of retribution, no, no uh, going with impunity, no kind of uh, damages or nothing. Because we don't even value our own selves. So what makes you think that the other nations are going to value us? It is up to us. It is us. It is up to us to respect ourselves, to respect our men, and to respect our women and respect our children, just like the other nations do. Thinking about this situation where you had this, what was it, a Korean guy that was on an airplane that got dragged off, and the whole country backed him up. And I believe within hours, the whole the whole uh, uh, airline was apologizing. That's because there was unity there. So like I said, we have the power. We got billions of dollars to spend, but there is no unity when it comes on how to make our dollars work for us. And that, again, well, you, some people might call this civil disobedience. This is really just about you just being disciplined enough to direct your dollars. That's not criminal. Making sure that your dollars are supposed to count towards your causes. 
That your dollars are supposed to count toward your causes. When these holidays come up, you say, you know what? Because of what happened to my brother, we're not spending nothing on Christmas. When, we, when these holidays come up, we're not spending. That's how you really. That's how you really get results. Going, you know, rallying and all that. That's fine. But what? What are you going to do when you leave here? What are you going to do? When you? What are you going to do when you get back to your homes? When you get back to your children? When you get back to your community? You still need to remember what happened. You need to remember what happened to Rasheem Carter. You need to remember what happened to Mike Brown. You need to remember what happened to Eric Gardner. You need to remember what happened to Emmett Till. You need to remember what happened to Medgar Evers. You need to remember what happened to Martin Luther King. You need to remember these things. Make it count. So nobody's asking us to, nobody's advocating anything that is that would be uh, deemed uncouth or violent or, 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 or extreme, like they said, extremists, none of that at all. This is about us simply making our dollars work for ourselves. Hold back your money on these holidays and see if the, and see if the people that shape policy, this is good, and that's when the people, the people that shape policy, see if they don't change their attitude and how they reflect us in the media. See how they don't have us running around looking like we're thugs and we don't take care of our women and take care of our children, because that's what's promoted. When, when you really show that we are serious about this, that's when the people are going to start listening. Okay, so I want to press that upon you. Read, read that thing some more. And I want to thank you for having us here, giving us the opportunity to, first of all, meet you. You're a very courageous woman, and I admire you. I really do. I admire you. To admire your courage to stand up in the face of tyranny. I can, I can imagine what you went through. I can imagine what you went through. Come on. Book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. The Lord says that we are a nation not desired. That's telling you who the Israelites are. We are a nation that is not desired. For, for, for our people to go missing, murdered, and killed, and basically no kind of outcry at all, no justice, nothing. And this has been happening for centuries since we've been here. Lynchings, burnings, and all that. None of that. We have gotten no therapy for all of that damage, mental, psychological damage that has happened to us over the years. We're still psych patients, basically, in the system. And we're trying to figure it out. And oftentimes, when you don't have any proper information, you're going to do what you're going to do blind. That's where the violence comes in, because the people are repressed. That's where all that comes in. But if the people knew how to organize and do what God told them to do, God says stay away from these holidays. God told you, he said, these holidays that we are celebrating in, because we're in our captivity. The Lord don't want us celebrating this kind of stuff. He says, you're my people. You're supposed to keep the holidays that I gave you. And when you do that and you return to me, I'll return to you. So we do have a bright day coming. We do have justice coming. We do have justice coming. We would not be here if we didn't think. When I say we would not be here, we would not be doing what we're doing if we did not believe that justice was coming. We know that there's a payback. We know that there's justice coming, and we're going to wait on the Lord like the scriptures say, wait ye upon me till I rise up to the prayer. But we know, we know that we're among our enemies that treat us like garbage. That's not riotous talk. I'm not trying to make you upset. I'm not trying to make you angry. No, I'm giving you facts. It's time for you to get the facts now. Let's, put on, let's turn off the television. Let's turn off the lies. Let's, tell off, let, let's turn off the tell vision. How about that? Let's turn off the tell our vision, the, 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 the vision that tells lies to your mind. Let's turn that off. Let's deal with what the Most High is really talking about, giving you the truth about the reality that we face and the solutions that are in the Bible that is designed to wake you up, just like you see these men woke up. And it ain't just men. We, women and children, they're all being woken up, and that's the plan of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord wants to bring righteousness in this earth, and that's what this is about. Okay, so I wanted y'all to understand that. Read, read that some more. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. The Lord said for us to gather ourselves together. Let's read that again. Okay. Gather yourselves together, yea. Gather together, O nation not desired. God says that we are a nation that is not desired. So it's no mystery as to why we get treated the way we get treated. It's no mystery why we have to fight and, and jump through all kinds of hoops just to get a smither of justice. There's no, there's no mystery behind that. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree bring forth. So the Most High, 
the Lord, the, the power. We're reading the Bible, the same Bible that you have in your churches, by the way. We're not reading something else. We go to church on Sunday. It's in there. Read that again. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. What is the decree? The Most High is going to bring devastation and judgment to this planet. That's right. what the decree is. And the, and the Lord said, I want you to wake up before I bring the devastation. So he's not asking. He's demanding. He's demanding that you obey his commandments. Read it again. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Did you hear that? Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon the children of Israel. Because you're in your captivity. And the most I said, I'm trying to gather you up. That's the reason why Jesus Christ was put on the cross. To save you. The nation of Israel is the one that need a savior. Need a savior. Give me that in Luke 168. Bring it out. Luke 168. Luke 168. This is the gospel for our people. You got it? The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, the children of Israel, the Israelites that was brought over here in captivity. That's what the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is talking about. Read. You go home and read it for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. It's in the Bible. Read. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. The horn of salvation is Jesus the Christ. He's the, he's the horn, the power of salvation for the Israelites. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the land of our, in the land, in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. The holy prophets is all the prophets in the Bible. From, Je from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The prophets are in there and the people that's bringing you the Bible now are the extended prophets from the patriots that's written in this Bible. <laughs> Which have been since the world began. It has always been the plan of the Most High to save his people after, the, after we broke the laws of the Most High. We're the Israelites. That we should be saved from our enemy. That we Israelites shall be saved from our enemy. So when we talk about salvation, the salvation is to save us from those that hate us. That's, right. so that's, the way, that's where the real hate group is. We're trying to protect ourselves from being murdered as a result of hate. That has, been, that has been indoctrinated in the people's minds all around the world to hate the black man, to hate the black woman, to hate the Israelites. Everywhere we go, there's a stigma following us. You feel like you're wearing a coat of, of hatred that, that people that's always trying to take you out. You'll all feel it. You'll all know what I'm talking about, but, we, but we're so suppressed we can't talk about it. We can't really say anything about it. That's the thing. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So who's the salvation for? The ones that are under the hand of their enemies. That's what the Bible's talking about. That's, that's the Bible. That is the Bible. So my sister, there's a great day coming for you. Okay? And we're here to support you. And our doors are open. Call us. All right? And we're here to support you. And we're not only here to support you, we're here to support all our brothers and all our sisters that's trying to figure this whole thing out. It's a terrible thing to be in a situation and you don't even know the reason why this stuff is happening to you. I can't think of nothing worse than that. You're getting punished and penalized and beat up and all kinds of stuff and you don't even know the reason why this is happening. Okay. You said you wanted to, what was it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.